Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from around the world using my Allosaurus as the perfect place to uh, hold my questions. How cool is that? All right, let's get into it. Andrew from Stamford, Connecticut. Dear DG, how are you doing? Andrew, I'm doing great. Good to hear from you. Well, I want to know, could a dinosaur get a disease like cancer, HIV, AIDS, malaria, etc.? Thanks and have a good one, Andrew. Well, Andrew, uh, interesting question. Absolutely, dinosaurs would have suffered from a variety of different diseases. Uh, perhaps not AIDS and HIV, but um, certainly they would have suffered from any disease that animals today have, perhaps a whole variety of diseases we don't even know about yet. One of the difficult things, Andrew, is that when we look at the skeleton of a dinosaur, it doesn't always give us an indication of what sort of diseases they may have had. For instance, unless cancer has eaten away at the bone, it's very hard for us to know if they had cancer. If uh, you had chicken pox as a child, well, there's no evidence in your bones that tells me you had chicken pox. So it's very hard to know for certain, but I have no doubt whatsoever that since the beginning of time, animals have had to deal with a variety of di different diseases and dinosaurs would have been no different. I one time um, talked to a guy and he had a kind of an interesting concept. His concept was that perhaps there were diseases that pterosaurs were transmitting. Pterosaurs, because they don't have any boundaries, they can travel pretty much anywhere. Imagine if there were diseases that they had that they were immune to, but dinosaurs were susceptible to. Well, if a pterosaur lands on you and is picking off parasites, uh, there's a possibility that he could give you a disease and transmit it to you. Um, Dr. Robert Bacher made a good point one time that disease may have played a much greater role in the extinction of dinosaurs than perhaps even the asteroid impact that caused the uh, crater in, um, in the Yucatan. It's certainly possible that disease played a much greater role and um, it may be possible that pterosaurs may have been the carrier. There's no evidence to prove that, no evidence to prove that. But it's simply an interesting concept. I think it's kind of cool. All right, uh, Eric from Bellevue, Nebraska. Hey, Dinosaur George, I hope you're doing well. Eric, I am doing well and it's always good to hear from you. He said, despite its inaccuracies, where did the theory of T-Rex's vision being based on movement come from? Who thought of this idea and what supported it? Also, is it possible that large theropods could be in prides instead of packs? All right, Andrew, good question. First question, who thought of it? My guess is probably one of the writers for Jurassic Park thought of it because I don't know anybody in paleontology who concluded the idea that Tyrannosaurus's vision would be based on movement. All of, the, uh, all of the information tells us that Tyrannosaurus probably had incredible eyesight. This, uh, this is uh, Albertosaurus, a Tyrannosaur cousin. His eyes would have been right here. Looking at this dinosaur head on, one of the things you'll notice is that he does have kind of an indentation where his snout gets a little narrow and gives him sort of, of uh, straightforward vision. But on Tyrannosaurus rex, it's even more distinctive. There's a dramatic drop here, and Tyrannosaurus rex had absolute clear binocular vision. It doesn't make any sense that an animal that is equipped with binocular vision, that is forward-facing eyes, doesn't make any sense that those, those eyes don't do him any good unless something's moving in front of him. So I don't know of anybody that supports that idea. I simply believe that it was, it was made up for the Jurassic Park movie. But it is, in my opinion, an idea that has no scientific support behind it. Um, all right, and I could be wrong, but that's, that's just my opinion. All right, and it's your second question, could they have lived in prides instead of packs? Well, a pride is a term that's de designated simply to lions. I don't know of any other animals on earth that we call a group of predators uh, a pride. All other predatory groups, in my opinion, are called packs. Now, there may be some variations to that, I understand, but um, uh, in general, there is no difference between a pride and a pack that I'm aware of. I mean, you look at wolves, there's an alpha male and an alpha female that kind of runs the group. Same thing with lions. I don't know why we call lions prides, and I don't know if the word pride really differentiates anything about them that packs have. So in my opinion, Eric, it makes sense to say that predatory dinosaurs probably lived in packs because pride is a word that's used to describe a mammalian group and dinosaurs are not mammals. All right, uh, Jasper from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Dear George, I like the dinosaur Dilophosaurus, but did he have a frill? 
Uh, Jasper, that's a cool question. No, he didn't. He didn't have a frill. There's no evidence to support that any dinosaur had a frill the way we saw in Jurassic Park. Sometimes, um, in, in, especially in Hollywood, they have this overwhelming urge to, to expand dramatically on the evidence. I've always said this, if somebody ever discovered a flying saucer, Hollywood, the first thing they would want to do is add flames painted on the side and more flashing lights and fire coming out of the back because they think it'd be cool. And I'm sitting there going, it's a flying saucer. That's amazing, but their opinion would be, nah, but it'd be so much better if it had flames and lights and all that kind of stuff. They did the same thing with Jurassic Park. They took a very wicked looking dinosaur named Dilophosaurus and gave him a frill. Why? Because they thought the frill of a frilled lizard looked cool, so they added it. So the answer is unfortunately no, Jasper. Now, I think Dilophosaurus is an amazing dinosaur as is, so just because he doesn't have a frill doesn't make him any less cool of a dinosaur. All right, Anthony from Iligan City in the Philippines. Can Spinosaurus defeat all biggest theropods like T. rex, Giganotus, and Carcharodontosaurus in one slash of its claws? Anthony, um, one slash of the claws of almost any dinosaur, except maybe Therizinosaurus, would not have been fatal unless that slash would have occurred literally at the spot in the, low, in the thinnest part of the neck where the throat meets the skull. That's the only place that one slash of a claw could really kill anything. The thickness of the hide of a, of a dinosaur like Tyrannosaurus rex, they must have had relatively thick hides. Even though those claws are big from Spinosaurus, they're not big enough to simply cut him open to the point where he falls over dead. So I don't believe that would have happened. I don't believe that if those dinosaurs, and those dinosaurs all lived at different times, but just for the sake of your question, I don't believe that a slash of a single claw would have been deep enough to cause a, a deep enough wound to have killed the dinosaur. Um, of course, there's always the possibility of infection and all that stuff, but... Uh, when I say Therizinosaurus might have been able to, his claws are gigantic. He may have been able to get those claws deep enough to, say, reach a vital organ, to cut a carotid artery, the big vein going up to the neck. Um, he may have been capable of doing something like that, but I don't know if Spinosaurus could have. All right, uh, finally, Jay from Mandeville, Jamaica. What's the difference between a Pawpawsaurus and a Gastonia? Cool question, Jay. A uh, big difference between them is armament. Gastonia has a much greater array of armor. Pawpawsaurus, as far as I know, Jay, I want to say that all that was found of him was the skull and maybe some other, other bones, but I don't believe a whole one was found. So I don't know if he was as well armored. Now, uh, he's a notosaurus, which means he doesn't have the club on his tail, he may not have been as heavily armored. He may have been, um, there may not, just not have been as many spikes and horns. That would be a main difference between them. Now, they are from the same general family, so there would have been a lot of similarities. But uh, in my opinion, you would have been able to recognize immediately a distinct difference between the two because Gastonia would have had much greater array of spikes and horns and things sticking off of his neck and side and back, uh, whereas Pawpawsaurus probably didn't have that many. All right, you guys, that's it for now. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Fill out the form. Keep in mind, I know a lot of you write over and over and over again, but uh, and you just never seem to get yours answered, and I am so sorry, but it truly is luck. Here's my suggestion to you. It doesn't do you any good to fill out the form and send the questions like one after the other. Like sometimes we receive like one person will send the same question 40 times in a row. The problem with that is it bunches all your questions together. And sometimes the folks that read these delete the entire page because they just can't even read all the questions. The best thing to do is to send your question, wait an hour or two or a day or two, send it again, wait another couple of days, send it again. That way it's more likely that your question will be uh, on one of the pages that they read. If all of your questions fill up an entire page, the chances are they may delete that page and never read it, even though you sent it 60 times. Um, and keep in mind as well, we receive more than a thousand questions a, a, a week now. We Yesterday, we got 312 questions. Yesterday, 312. So it's just luck to get on it. I know some of you have written me so many times, and I apologize for not being able to answer your question, but um, just... 
Too many questions, not enough time. All right, you guys, take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. Uh, for you young people, always practice your reading because reading is incredibly important and it's going to be helpful to you throughout your entire life. And for everybody, use the best manage you got because it sure makes the world a better place. I'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.